Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Chicago White Sox March to October. We are really closing in on the end of the season here. 22 games remaining before the end of the regular season. For a while now, it's been a pretty tight three-team race at the top of the AL Central. But things are seeming to start to space out a little bit here. The Twins have fallen all the way back to five games back. We're at two and a half, and then the Indians are in the lead. But we have a series here against the Twins that I'm pretty sure this next game is the first game of that series. So if we can manage to take that series and potentially even sweep the Twins, we can effectively knock the Twins out of the division race. They're almost out of it now. But uh, I think if we can if we can put together a really good series, that'll be their final blow for um, their hopes of winning the division. We also really need to gain some ground on the Indians. And I don't know what the schedule looks like because there's no way to look at the schedule in this game mode. But uh, if we have games against the Indians, those are going to be absolutely huge because recently the Indians have been playing crazy good, just like we have. So we're not able to gain any ground, and I'm lucky that we're playing as good as we are, uh, especially in that last episode, because if we weren't, this this division race would be out of hand, like we wouldn't even have a shot. But we can't really be looking ahead that far right now, we gotta focus on the task at hand, and that's beating the Twins in this game to hopefully give us that edge in uh, sweeping this series. The White Sox are looking to improve their position as this pennant race really starts to heat up. But in order to do so, they'll have to win a close game against this strong contender. Well, Matt, that's how you become a contender yourself. Winning the close games and winning against good teams. This is a bit of a prove-it game for a team who still has time to better their standings into the postseason mix. Think you've got what it takes to make an impact in October? Okay, let's see it. You know, I'm surprised that the game still has Ronaldo Lopez on the mound. The line score said he just gave up three runs in the sixth. And now it seems like he's given up a leadoff base runner here in the seventh. So, make sure I have the right guys warming up here. Um, gonna get Aaron Bummer up. Actually, he's immediately ready. Should I just put Aaron Bummer in? You know what, I'm just... Oh, we can't. I was, I was gonna say I was just gonna do it, but you can't. Why can't I put Aaron Bummer in right away? There's no three pitch minimum. Ronaldo Lopez has been pitching for like six full innings already. Why can't I put Bummer in? Well, that's that's a bummer. I think that's the first time I've used an Aaron Bummer pun this March to October. So count yourselves lucky that I haven't abused that. Well, we gotta we gotta work with Lopez here. We gotta see what he can get done. And actually, this might be if we can turn it quickly. No, we can't. All right, so at least we get the lead runner still. That, that was almost a double play if we could have turned that a little quicker. We still can't put Aaron Bummer in. This is uh, this is weird. I did not realize that the game would keep this three batter minimum thing when you load in, even if the starter's already thrown a bunch. Actually, hang on a second. Oh, I just... Well, that makes sense now. I just realized that Lopez wasn't the starter for this game. They had him working out of the bullpen again, and those were literally the first two pitches he's thrown. So I didn't even realize it, but the CPU must have changed around the whole rotation and everything again to put uh, put Lopez back in the bullpen. Oh, this is going to be our double play. That ball was hit hard enough. We're going to turn that, pick the ball up out of the dirt. We got that one, man. Our lineup is all messed up because I see Edwin is at first. Luis Basabe? Why? They? Why is he on the team? I am very confused about the rules right now. I thought the whole September call-up thing didn't exist anymore, but now we got Luis Basabe playing today. So that leads me to believe that we did have September call-ups. I am beyond confused. All right, so let's see here. We don't have any bonus pitcher, or we know we do, because here's Kopech. Well, I don't know. I am extremely confused as to what's going on right now, but the only guys that I could see, at least from the in-game screen that got called up, is Luis Basabe here in Kopech. All right, Basabe getting a perfect grounder to lead off the inning. That's a good start. He was in today for Eloy, so 
I was kind of thinking if I should pinch hit Eloy for him, but he comes through there. All right, we draw a walk with Jose Abreu. We got two runners on now, and we got enough speed on second that a, uh, a base hit should probably score a run. Actually, I should probably check on the arms. Not, not the strongest arm, so yeah, most base hits will probably score that run from second. Oh, Grandal! Oh, wasn't it bad? The second pitch of the at-bat coming through in the clutch with a three-run no-doubt home run. 416 feet to right field, and Grandal gives us... The three-run lead here in the top of the eighth. 25 home runs on the season. I, for the most part, hadn't been doing that great with Grandal this year, but he's been doing really good in the simulations, and it finally shown through while I'm at the plate. That was, that was gigantic. I'm going to leave Ronaldo Lopez in for now with the three-run cushion, but I won't hesitate to pull him because I don't want this to get out of hand. And of course, right on cue, there's the leadoff base hit. All right, game fine. You, you take that one. Are you kidding? A fastball lowing in, and you're gonna turn on it and hit it. Not not just hit it out, but hit it 447 feet. Are you kidding? Well, all right, Lopez, you really, you really shut the door for us there. Steve, Steve Sheck. All right, we got the first out on a strikeout. Oh, come on. I, I didn't even think I missed my spot on the on the pure analog thing that much. And that ran so far inside, and now they pinch ran. And they're stealing, and of course I throw a slider. Oh, this is bad. Why, why does this stuff have to happen? All right, we got another strikeout. That was actually huge. No. Come on, can we gun him? No. That is so stupid. It is always those very late blue pits that kill you on this game. All right, well, there's the third out, but not before they could tie it up again. That was, I can't believe how ridiculous that was, man. Oh, we got to put together another good inning now and hopefully shut the door. Tim Anderson, though, all right, he's not going to let this inning die. We're going to try and get the double on this. League leader in doubles on the season, and he's extending that. 40th double even on the year. And our team as a whole is leading the league in doubles. All right, that's kind of cool. All right, well, I know Basabe got the job done last time, but, I mean, come on. Top of the ninth, runner on second, two outs. We have to bring in the MVP, Eloy Jimenez. Oh, my God, how did I miss that? That has to be crushed. Yes, Eloy, that's... Wait. Okay, whoo. I could, I couldn't tell off the bat. <laughs> I really couldn't. But Eloy comes in and gets the job done. That's exactly why I brought him in. And I almost can't believe. Like, there's part of me that knew as soon as I brought him in that he was about to hit a go-ahead two-run home run. But then there was also part of me that's like, I am totally gonna blow this at bat. But I didn't blow it. Eloy Jimenez, the MVP, comes in off the bench with two outs in the top of the ninth. And breaks this game open again with a two-run home run to take the 10-8 lead. All right, I'm bringing Adam Engel into the game for Eloy. Eloy got his job done, but he's not known for his defense, so we want to make sure we have that. And then I'm going to bring in Aaron Bummer to close this game, even though we have Giles and Givens, who are the closers, but they have three lefties up in a row. So I'm going to hopefully take advantage of that, and I really hope Aaron Bummer can come in and get the job done in this. He's 5 for 6 in his save opportunities on the year. He's got a sub-2 ERA, Aaron, Bom Aaron Bummer. I almost called him Aaron Bummer. But he's, uh, he's lighting it up this year on the mound. Oh, and what a start that is. <laughs> Lead off rocket off the wall and if Mazzara would turn around and get it in quicker we could actually had a shot at getting him at second come on Nomar all right eight pitch at bat so they're really 
they're really making Aaron Bummer work, but at least we get an out there so we don't have to worry about anything happening there. We got another lefty up here, Luis Arias, but he was the one who started their big inning last time, but he's going to go out on a first pitch, assuming Engel makes the play, and he does, and we hold him at second once again, so we only have one more out to go. And, of course, that last out is Mitch Garver, and honestly, not pitching to him with Aaron Bummer. Not going with the... With, I, I, or not, I am going with the matchup. That's what I meant to say. Michael Givens, I'm going to bring him into the game to hopefully get this last out. We got him down to two strikes now. Let's see if he chases this slider. And he does not really chase it. It was in the zone, but it gets him swinging over it anyway. And we pick up the win in another stressful game against the Twins. But we were so clutch in that game. The three-run homer from Grandal in the eighth. And then the two-run pinch hit home run with two outs from Eloy in the ninth. I don't know. Honestly, based on this game alone, our team might be ready. Like, we really might be ready for the playoffs. Able to, to bounce back like that. I mean, look at that. In the last four innings, we scored eight of our ten runs. But let's see. We got a lot of momentum here. And we don't sweep the Twins. Why didn't it use that momentum to sweep the Twins? That would have been huge. But we took the first game against the Dodgers. And it looks like that, uh, that next game is also going to be against the Dodgers. And we're going to get a chance to walk it off to ignite a postseason push. Hopefully it'll be a quick one because I think I want to play it in this episode. So bottom of the ninth, nobody out. Two runners on base. We should be able to walk this one off. Their postseason chances hanging in the balance. How huge would it be for this team to win this game right now in dramatic walk-off fashion, guys? Matt, if they can win this game in any fashion, it's going to give this team a major lift. But if they win it in walk-off dramatics, it would absolutely set this team on fire. This really feels like September baseball. They've got Jimmy Nelson, a low overall righty, to face Nomar Mazar right now. I'm going to consider pinch running for Edwin, though, real quick. I think with Edwin being the DH, we can pinch run for him with just about anybody. So we're going to get Adam Engel up off the bench. He's going to be that winning run on second with 94 speed. That's going to be big. Oh, that's exactly what we cannot have happen. I popped up a sinker of all pitches. All right, well, we're going to look back to the bench here. I'm going to bring Zach Collins in to pinch hit for Leuri. Oh, no, he saved it. Okay, he was safe at first, but my God. Whoever the Dodgers' first baseman is there just saved the game by knocking that ball down. Apparently, Zach Collins has a 14-game hitting streak now. And we're going to see Blake Trinan, oh, who's got a pretty good uh, stat line there on the season. But we have Danny Mendick coming up to the plate. Who else would we want in this situation with the bases loaded, bottom of the ninth against a tough righty? Oh, of course he did it. Deep fly ball, 94 speed, no question. Danny Mendick with a walk off sacrifice fly of course we knew Danny Mendick was going to get the job done that is I believe Danny Mendick's second walk off plate appearance of this season so far at least that I've done that I can remember Danny Mendick man one of the more clutch players on this team I can't believe how good he's been that was a big win too I thought I, I thought it was slipping away especially after that Mazzara pop up and then that um that knocked down by the first baseman. I I had a bad feeling that this was going to end in a double play. And then we were going to have to play like 14 innings. Another three fireballs to add to the momentum. And our momentum is huge after that. Lat well, I guess it's not still. But now it's huge. This, uh, this, is, this could be really good. Like, if we use this momentum, which apparently we didn't in that last game against the Dodgers. But now we sweep the Royals. And we got another key moment coming up. So they're calling this one win bid for top spot in standings. We are now a half game back of the Indians 
we are projected to get the same amount of wins at 97. I am going to call it there though for this episode. We've got a relatively long key moment in the next one. A big one too because the, the A's are actually in the uh, wild card race here. And um, I guess we're not in too much danger of dropping out of it anymore. But uh, to put them further down would be kind of nice. But make sure if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for me and subscribe to see the rest of this March to October series. The next episode might be the last one of the regular season. We only have 13 games left of the regular season, so I might try to fit it all in the next episode. But with that being said, that's all I got for you guys in this one. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.